gonna do a drawing video we're actually doing a coloring video instead um, we can talk about that later but uh, I've got a file set up and I'm just roughing in some colors this is a new technique I've stumbled across um, and I'm literally just blotting down colors rough and ready so let's talk about what we've got on the screen here we have got uh, inked artwork we have a, a dark green color underneath it and I'm working on a layer above the dark green just blocking in color and I'm painting the tree trunks pink um, I saw a video by um, uh, McKay and Bones they were doing something and they were, they were, they were painting um, a forest scene and they've got like a magenta tree with like blue foliage and I, I really like that look so I sort of stole the idea of pink at least purple um, trunks uh, for trees and you know we can add flecks of blue and green and brown to sort of stop it being a massive block of colour I think that's the one thing that really flattens an image is just having large areas of colour flat colour you put a bit of noise in there you put a bit of interest in there suddenly it's, it's looking like something else so another thing that I noticed that they did they really went for that sort of subsurface approach to foliage. So the foliage is close to the trunk, is darker than the foliage at uh, furthest away from the tree uh, trunk. So that's what I've done here. Uh, this is sped up uh, twice the speed um, to save all the tedious knocking about. Um, I think that setting photo of that works really well so here I'm just laying down a skin tone on, on Puck um, I'm just putting down like a, essentially a, a quote unquote uh, fawn um, on this guy um, and I'm, I'm not really massively worried about keeping in the light I'm more interested in laying the colours down quickly and seeing how they look as a group um, I suppose the closest you've got is uh, the idea of a colour model which you have in sort of like games and animated uh, films um, and it's a, it's a good way to sort of work out the mood for the panel or for the page as opposed to just say oh here's this colour, this colour, this colour and you've almost got like a separate palette and you're just filling flat areas um, and I think that works for certain things. Bronze Age comics, for example. Um, um, <coughs> heck, even like 80s comics. Having a standard palette sped things up and made things a lot easier. Ah, this is something interesting. I'm attempting to do subsurface scattering on the ears. You can see that the, the interior of the ear is red, the exterior is more yellowy. And I'm sort of replicating the effect if you hold, um, like, or put your fingers over a, f um, a torch or a flashlight, and you see the, the red glow between the fingers. That's subsurface scattering. And uh, with this lighting in this forest setting, I think it would really start to shine. So I'm using that same yellow as a sort of a highlight colour here as well, just to get some bounce lights in there. And I'm literally just drawing lines of colour. I'm not going for long on the paint in um, getting things accurate I'm just trying to go for a, a feeling and I'm looking at it I'm zooming out to look at the page as a whole yeah. um, I've decided that the foliage in, in, in on the forest floor needs to be darker so I'm just literally just knocking all that back As per usual, I'm using Krita. I'm using um, a laptop with an Intuos tablet. Um, Okay, 
looks like I'm putting in the this panel too now. Um, I want the trunk to be different, not the same colour. Um, This might very well change between now and the final version, but um, I'm working fairly fast, I'm working fairly loose, and I'm working um, under the inks. And it's sort of almost feasible that you could possibly just tidy up this layer and then you've got your essentially flower colours ready to go. supposed to be also this is supposed to be Greece so maybe we should look, I should look for Greek birds of the local Greek birds of the of the, of the forest find a small songbird that would, would fit the description hmm I'll look into that yeah you see I'm just dropping some some highlights on this guy and this is all on one layer and I'm just eyeballing it I'm not I'm not doing anything special Back to that first panel, putting the flesh tones on, just rough and ready those flesh tones. Um, I'll need to work on what's going on in the background. So, if you don't know, in the background, what you're seeing is um, King Theseus, uh, his, his bride, Hippolyta, and um, God, what are the names? Well, let's call them lovers because I can't remember their names. Um, Lysander, Helena, and two of us whose names escape me for a moment. They've just been watching a play, and the play has these. It's, it's, it's the play that the rude mechanics are doing. So you've got the play famous, you know, you've got uh, one guy plays a lion, one guy plays the moon, one guy just plays a wall. Um, so you've got the moon, you've got the lion, you've got the wall, you've got some other characters there. And then those three green bobs, they're meant to be like, I don't know, bushes or poplars, that sort of thing. And uh, the idea is this is going to be a bit of a nice set. I might drop some, you know, Doric columns in there, but I think it's more Roman. Just something to give it a bit of interest. An interesting location for someone to put a play on, for example. Um, I've got a new layer, I'm just putting a blue overlay on this background and I'm probably going to just... The plan for when I come to actually colour this is to use this blue to drop the background backwards. And when I pick the colours, I'll pick the sampled colours. So I should get a green with a blue tinge. I should get the white with a blue tinge, that purple with a blue tinge. And I think that'll work really well. Also it means I don't have to necessarily have another layer to put... Um, a blue multiply layer on there. Although I could still put one on there to knock it back even further. So there's that. Um, what else we got going on here? Oh, I'm putting the fresh tones in again. 
suppose really in hindsight I should have done the background first and then the colour puck. I'm sure in later panels I'll, I'll, I'll uh, remedy, that, remedy that mistake. Uh, looks like I'm talking with the idea of having a purple uh, tree trunk, which I actually think looks pretty good. On this, in the first panel, the, the purple's on there to sort of really make it, to bring it forwards, to make it pop from the background. And yet, on panel uh, panel four, it's being used on one of the furthest away trees to sort of sell depth. Um, that's interesting, I think. Let's put some dark layers of foliage in there. I'll come back and select that, that those colours again. And then we'll start putting the mid ground or even the full ground foliage in. Um, leaf onesie, his leaf leotard. I'm loving tier two. I think tier two works really well. Obviously, I think tier one needs a lot more work, but uh, no doubt we'll get that wrapped up in this video. I'm just laying down. Looks like I'm just laying down some flesh tone yet again on on puck. I'm really inefficient at doing this. I should really go back to front, from the back to the front. Oh, here we go. So I'm trying to get some either either hinting at foliage, which I think this is going to be foliage, but also try and get the idea of of, of um, landscape. So I've got a fear I might need to put some, some walls or something in there just to sort of hint at, at that sort of stuff. Too worried about the background for this one because actually there's quite a big speech bubble that's going to go in there or a couple of speech bubbles so i know that a lot of this will be speech bubbles but some continue realization that speech bubbles are key to your layout but not key to your inking um i think placing the balloons as early as possible will, will pay dividends you know, you can use balloons to draw the eye around the page. You can get them to sort of to dictate reading order. You can use them to slow the reading of the page down. You can use it to speed them up. Um, and to leave that to sort of chance is, I don't know, seems a big risk. So I like to put the, pen, the speech bubbles in at pencil stage and then ink them 
I ink, when I ink the drawings, I don't ink the pencils. And then when I'm putting the page together, I'll have a pencil scan and an ink scan. And the pencil scan is literally just reminding me where the speed was sort of meant to go. And I just drop them on. And I've already done all the hard work in terms of direction, reading order, trying to pull the eye around the page. I'm doing it with the composition here. So on panel one, tier one, uh, the foot, the training foot is pointing you to panel two. He's looking at panel three. Panel three is a tricky one because his finger is pointing down to panel four. <laughs> and uh, panel four has kind of got his arm sweeping, his right arm is sort of pointing towards five. It's not ideal for that, that, that last one, but it, it, it's pretty good, I think. I think it's not too bad. I think we're coming towards the end of this session so this was a 35 minute session of, of colouring and I'm, I'm really pleased with how this, this page is coming together in terms of um, in terms of the colour model I think it looks really good so yeah this is something to try something new um, instead of just flatting colours and picking them randomly I'm, I'm avoiding flatting altogether and just going for a more painterly approach. Now if you found this interesting, uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, right? Uh, don't forget to rock the bell for notifications, it all helps the channel and uh, means I'm not screaming into the void. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, what else? I think that's, yeah, I think that'll do for now. I'll just let this play out. There's only 30 seconds left or so. So I'll let it go. As I say, like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And uh, join us again next time. We'll be taking this colour model and working it with uh, an ambient vision pass. And we'll start and get this page sort of put together, I think. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're still subscribed and lock the bell for notifications. Okay, bye bye now.